Hey guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today we're talking about product photography. After all, what is the best lens of all for product photography? For those of you who do not know me, I have worked as a product photographer shooting luxury bags, accessories and jewelry for about a year, exactly a year ago before I started out this channel. I've also shot clothing and food, which even though it's not exactly under the product photography category, it's pretty similar in many ways. And even during the weddings I shot in the past, I needed to develop the skills of a product photographer when I needed to photograph the couple's rings, the invitation and the bride's jewelry, just to mention what I have in the top of my head. When I started shooting professionally, all I had was a camera and one lens, and only afterwards I started investing in more specific gear to which specific type of work I did. So throughout this couple of years I've been working as a professional photographer, I've tested out a couple of different lenses when it comes to product photography, not only for the sake of testing it, but because I not always had the specific equipment I thought was the best for that. Slowly, all of that changed. There are four lenses I'm going to mention today that can be good options if you want to do product photography, but of course I have a favorite one. I could only mention the best one, but I think it would be unfair to the ones of you who are starting out and might prefer to have one of the other three lenses for different reasons. I'll explain all of that straight away. The first lens I'd like to mention as a good lens for product photography is the 50mm 1.4. It is the first lens I'm talking about because even though it would be my less favorite lens out of the four you will see me talk about in this video, it is also the cheapest one of them and also a pretty versatile option. At the time I record this video you can find this lens for about $400 and you can even go lower in price if you choose a 1.8 instead of the 1.4, then you will only spend about $180. I will only talk about Canon prices in this video but you will find similar prices for brands like Nikon and Sony and might even get more interesting prices for Sigma and Tamron. Just make sure they really have a similar version and find the best one that fits your camera. Besides the 50mm being a decent sharp lens for product photography, it is also a good one for portrait photography. It is the lens I usually take with me when I'm traveling since it is lightweight, not too wide and not too tight. Its mid-range focal length makes it, in my opinion, a pretty versatile lens. If you choose to go with a 50mm prime lens, you will certainly be able to get good product photos, but not as good as you would if you had one of the next lenses I'm going to talk about. Why? Because the longer the lens, the less distortion you will have in your shots. So if you can go with a 70mm or longer, the less distortion you will have. But then maybe you have a small room and your camera is a crop sensor. The 50mm might be the best option in that case. So summarizing the pros of the 50mm lens for product photography are its price, its versatility, its weight and the fact it might be the best option for small spaces and crop sensor cameras. The con is you might have a little distortion from the focal length, which is considerably short. The second lens I would consider for product photography would be the 85mm 1.4 or 1.8. This is a lens with very little distortion that will be very sharp in lower apertures. Definitely a good option for product photography. Keep in mind that the longer the lens, the greater the space you will need to shoot your products though, especially if you're shooting bigger products. If you have a full-frame camera, most possibly this will not be a problem for you, but still take that in consideration. If you go for the 85mm prime lens, you will end up having a lens that is simply amazing for portraits and for b-rolls in general also. This lens can be found for around $400 on its 1.8 version and for around $1,600 on its 1.4 version. If you're on a budget, don't worry, I myself only have the 1.8 and I do incredible photos with it. In resume, the 85mm lens will give you great focal length with little or no distortion, great bokeh, decent price on its 1.8 version and on the other hand might be a tight focal length 
safe if you shoot with a crop sensor camera or in small spaces. Before I tell you about the third lens, I consider a good one for product photography. If this video helps you, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already and consider hitting the like button. You will help me a lot by doing so and I really appreciate it a bunch. The third lens on my list today is an option for the ones of you who want versatility and who are okay with spending some extra cash in a piece of glass. It's the 24-70 2.8. Very versatile in terms of focal length and it's very sharp in lower apertures. The good thing about this lens is it will allow you to take great quality photos of big items as well as of small ones. Another option that would substitute this one would be the 70-200 2.8, which is a lens I do not own myself. But then again, keep in mind that because of its long focal length, you will need even more space, especially to shoot bigger items. Now, back to the 24-70mm, which would be my third choice for product photography. The downside to it is that it is a pretty expensive lens. You will find this one for about $1,900 on Amazon. Another downside to it is it is a pretty heavy lens. Compared to the prime lenses I just talked about before, it weighs quite a lot. Of course that, since you're shooting product photography, you will probably have this lens on the tripod and its weight might not matter much. But in case you want to use it for other purposes also, keep that in mind. Still, it is one of my favorite lenses and it is also the main lens I use to shoot weddings or to any situations where I need to be very versatile. So summarizing, it's a very versatile lens to shoot big and small products in large or small places. Even though it's a zoom lens, it is still very sharp in lower apertures. On the other hand, it's a pretty expensive piece of glass and it is considerably heavy. Finally, we got to my favorite lens when it comes to product photography. After shooting products with not only but also all of the lenses I just mentioned before, which are good lenses for product photography, I got to the conclusion that the best lens of all to shoot product photography is the 100mm 2.8 macro. It is simply amazing for details and I can shoot both bigger and very small products such as rings and jewelry, keeping each particular little detail of the item in the photo. Plus, you can shoot it from very close to your product. Since it is a macro lens, you will be able to focus being only about 15 centimeters away from your subject. Its macro function is outstanding for shooting small items. None of the other lenses I mentioned before got even close to the amount of detail this macro lens can get. It is insane. I absolutely love it for product photography. As I said, it's my favorite one. But then again we get to the reasons why I decided not to talk only about this lens. If you're working with a crop sensor camera or if you have very little space to shoot, you might not be able to take a photo of your item simply because it does not fit in your frame. Not only that, you might be someone who wants to be more versatile. You might want to shoot product photography and also portraits or maybe product photography and landscape and so on. You might want versatility and if you're after that, this might not be the perfect lens for you. So take all of that into consideration when you choose your product photography lens. In resume, the 100mm 2.8 macro is to me the best lens for product photography because it is amazingly sharp and since it is a macro lens you can shoot from very close to your subject and still be able to capture incredible details of your products. Because of its long focal length it does not present any distortions to the images either. The downside to the 100mm macro is it is not as fast as the other three lenses mentioned here depending on the focal distance you use, which is not a problem for product photography but could be if you want to shoot other things. Another downside to it is its focal length can limit you. 100mm is a pretty long focal length and will not let you be very versatile. It is not one of the cheapest lenses on the market either. You will find it for around $1,300 on Amazon. Another important tip, I mentioned the 24-70mm 2.8 and the 70-200 2.8, which are zoom lenses. But if you're going for zoom lenses, pay close attention to the quality of the lens you're getting. If you end up going with the cheap option of a zoom lens, you might end up losing a lot of sharp 
sharpness when shooting in lower apertures such as f8 to f16, which are very common apertures for product photography depending on the product you're shooting. So if you do not want to spend some good money on a zoom lens, but still want to have high-end quality product photos, a prime lens such as the 50mm, the 85mm or the 100mm macro could be the best option for you. If you want to check any or all of these lenses out, I will leave a link for each one of them here in the description. Those are affiliate links, but if you end up buying one of them using these links, you will not pay any extra for it. But still, you will help me a whole lot to keep this channel going, as Amazon will pay me a commission for your purchase. So, yeah it will be highly appreciated. Also, if you'd like to learn more about product photography, I have an entire video where I make a product shot and talk about the whole process for which I will leave a link up here and in the description also. If this topic interests you, please let me know in the comments below as I'm also considering preparing an entire course only talking about product photography in detail. Is that something that you would be interested in? Drop me a line and share your thoughts with me. So, have you made up your mind? Do you shoot product photography already or are you thinking about starting it now? After you watch this video, which one do you believe is the best lens for you? I hope this video helps you to find the perfect fit for you guys. Thank you so much for watching me and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!